Hey everyone, welcome back to the Craft Parenting Podcast, the podcast about two Cincinnati craft beer lovers with a parenting problem. My name is Joe Ledry again. With me is my lovely wife and co-host, Caroline. How's it going, Caroline? I am here. <laughs> my legs have died and fallen off, but I am here. We'll get more into that <laughs> later. Um, but it is officially June. Yes, it is. And uh, we had a quite a, quite the weekend with some adventures. A little bit. We're going to talk about that this episode. And uh, as Caroline, what what do you call this summer, this upcoming summer? If you check our Instagram, it is Hot Mom Summer. It is Hot Mom Summer. So and I have the t-shirt to prove it. You have a t-shirt to prove it. So we are going to talk about Hot Mom Summer and uh, maybe some plans. We'll see where, where, where this episode takes us because who knows? <laughs> My brain might have died too. We'll see. All right. So we will talk about that and more uh, after we talk about the coffee. Hey everyone, Joe Ludwig here with the one and only Caroline. Hey! Before we get to the main topic of today's episode, we wanted to pause briefly and tell you about how you can support the show. So if you enjoy listening to the podcast and reading our blog posts every week, then you now have the opportunity to support the show through Buy Me A Coffee. Here's what you need to know. It's super easy to do. You don't have to set up an account to contribute. You have options. Send us a one-time donation or sign up as a member to contribute on a monthly or yearly basis. Plus, you can unlock exclusive content. To learn more about how you can support the Craft Parenting Podcast through Buy Me A Coffee, click the link in the show notes. And now, back to the show. <laughs> Listening to the Craft Parenting Podcast with Joe and Caroline. Stay tuned for more. All right, we are back. And we have a beer in front of us. We do. It is a uh, Crowler with a C. It is by Brink Brewing Company. Uh, they are from College Hill, not North College Hill, just College Hill. Yeah, don't mix those two up. And we are drinking a dark lager. What does that say? Dark? Dark, dark? word? I don't, you're the one that ordered it. I thought you had looked it up. I did not look it up. It's hard to read. It's, it looks like word. Bark, bark, look. Okay, it looks like they wrote the word dark twice. I have no idea why. They did. Yeah, it's a it's dark word lager. So it's a dark lager. Um it's on untapped as dark word lager. But I don't have it's a Czech dark lager. Here we go. A Czech dark lager. Never heard of that. Uh, hold up a minute. I got to find it. Okay. More info. Contains wheat. Um, this is the antihero to Drew Pilsner, where Drew is light and hoppy. Word, Drew backwards, is dark and malty. Notes of lightly roasted barley and chocolate round out this dark copper lager. None of the bitter roasty qualities found in some of the other dark beers. Stout, Porter, Schwarz beer. I mean, I get roasty. I thought there was coffee in this. Mm. Maybe that's the chocolate. I do get bitter. I don't know what they're talking about with the. They said not as bitter. Yeah, I don't. I don't see that. I don't either. <laughs> it's it's good. It's it's not a dunkle, which I thought it was a dunkle. It's different. A it's, bit. It's bitter. More bitter than I think I'm used to. Mm-hmm. It's not smooth like I, 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 you would think a lager would be. It doesn't have that clean taste. It just has that like aftertaste. Mm-hmm. It has the. It's just bitter for me. Yeah. But it is and a little roasty, like you said, 
And the appearance is completely black. It looks kind of red through the light, but it's very dark. I don't see red. See, it's like, it's got like pink on the edges. Okay. It has like a reddish tint, but yes. it's, it's still very, very dark. It's very dark. Yeah. Well, it's kind of different. I, I've never had this one before, so. Well, it seems like it's new. When we were at Brink the other week, um, I'm like, well, I like, I like Dunkel. It doesn't say Dunkel, but um, I'll, I'll give it a go. It's definitely not a Dunkel. It, it's it's different. Correct. Uh, which when I see dark lager, I think that's another word for for like a Dunkel or a short sphere. But this is not that. Alas. Earwax. Earwax. Yes, it's good. Mm-hmm. I will say that. Not what I was expecting though. No. So, um, Brink, you're full of surprises. They're full of surprises. <laughs> a joke that only we will get unless you've watched a lot of Thomas the Tank Engine. Not a lot, just a particular movie. Yeah. A movie from actually this, well, last decade. Yeah. Like, it's from a Thomas movie and like. From like 2017. Mm-hmm. We actually watched Thomas from this decade yesterday. Yeah, I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was stupid. <laughs> well, it doesn't, it's not any kind of realistic. Like normal Thomas is at least mildly realistic. He stays on the rails. He can only travel one way on the rails. Unless, unless he goes too fast. Unless and he goes too fast and falls off. Or if he's on the turntable, which turns him around. But on All Engines Go, which is the new Thomas, it's like anime style. And the trains can do all of these tricks that actual trains cannot do. So zero physics. I don't like it. It's cute. Mm, Is it though? Yes. I don't like it. That doesn't make it not cute. Well, okay. Uh, So that's the beer that we're drinking. All right, so uh, we celebrated Memorial Day weekend a few, well, at this point it's two weekends ago, Mm -hmm. Um, which to me, Memorial Day is officially summer. Yes, it is the Uh, unofficial start of summer. It's the unofficial start of summer because summer technically doesn't start until the summer solstice that's like June 21st-ish. Yeah. But um, to me, Memorial Day is the unofficial kickoff. So we kind of already touched on what we did over Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. Uh, We built the gazebo, or you built the gazebo. Yeah. I attempted to help. No, that wasn't Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Well, that was after Mother's Day. Yeah, Mother's um, Day we stained. The Friday before Memorial Day weekend, I started to build a gazebo. And then after Memorial Day weekend, I finished building the gazebo yeah. and almost got stuck in said gazebo. Yeah. So what have we been doing since since then? What are we going to be doing this summer? Or first, what do you envision Hot Mother, Hot Mom sun, Summer to be? It's just me doing stuff <laughs> over the summer, but I'm a hot mom. Yeah. Because all moms are hot moms. And I'm going to have lots of fun this summer with the kids. Lots of sunscreen and outside play. And long naps because I wore them out in the morning. (laughs) So um, let's go backwards. Start with today. What did you do today? I didn't do anything with kids today. Well, I mean, I did, but I didn't. Well, you the, the the kids stayed at my mom's house. Yeah. So the kids stayed at the mom's house, at Joe's mom's okay. house for the day. Because I had my first doctor's appointment that was just a me doctor's appointment. For like the first time in two years. So my doctor was like, hey, so all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, none of that applies anymore. Here's where life is now. <laughs> <laughs> Ignore all of that stuff. This is where we are now. Um, did some stuff around the house. And then went to go pick up the children. And as I'm loading the children into the car, like I actually went on a walk because 
I need to get more exercise, as discussed with my doctor. As Americans do. Yes, as Americans are wont to do. So I went for a walk, thinking, okay, this is going to be my exercise for the day before I go pick up the kids. Picked up the kids, grabbed all their stuff because, hey, we'll do this in two trips. One trip with the stuff and then one trip with the kids. Well, Lily wanted to help. Mm. So I hadn't even made it off the porch of your parents' house before Lily had opened the door and said, I help mama. And I said, (laughs) no, 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 go back inside. And your mom said, no, Lily, you're going to let Chrissy out. (laughs) And then Chrissy was gone. Chrissy is my parents youngest dog she's a coon hound we the, think we think she's maybe one one, one and a half ish years old she is the puppy and does not like to come when called reminds me a lot of zoe <laughs> at her age because zoe was very much like that she destroys stuff she does prior to me exiting the house she had bitten the nose off of sky one of Lily's stuffed animals <laughs> that she plays with from Paw Patrol. Um, so I have my purse on my back that has my car keys in it. Um, I had forgot that I had parked my van across, like in front of your parents' driveway in case your sister showed up so she could park in her normal spot. Um, and just took off after the dog and chased her all through the neighborhood. She stopped to sniff some dogs that were in their fences, but not long enough for me to catch her. She doubled back a few times, but not close enough for me to catch her. I lost her for a hot second. (laughs) And then I found her again. My parents live in a neighborhood. It's a big neighborhood. It is. And because it's a new neighborhood, not everybody has fences. And I'm not sure what the reasoning was. I think it's because most of the backyards go to like a gully. So there's like an alleyway between all the fences. So it's not like people's fences go to their property line. They just get closest to their property line. So there aren't a lot of options for places where you can corner in a dog. Because since the neighborhood is so new, not every house has a fence or not. There's only like a quarter of the houses that have fences. And not a lot of those fences meet up. Mm. So lost her for a hot second when I was talking to a lady who said she went that way. (laughs) Found her again. Tried calling her. That didn't work. So I just started cussing her out. (laughs) Because at this point, I'm like, I have not run this much (laughs) since before I had kids. Like when we actually kind of did 5Ks, we kind of ran. Yeah. And it's been a very long time since we've done that. Um, And like I'm still not getting anywhere close to her because she's fast because she's a coon hound. They're meant to chase after coons (laughs) and catch coons. Yeah. So we run by this house that has four dogs playing in the backyard and their, their mom is out in the backyard too. And she's like, hey... Will she stay if there's another dog to play with? And I said, I don't know. So she just lets one of her dogs out of the fence. What? Yeah, (laughs) because her dog listens and will come back when called, unlike Chrissy. Um, So that kind of works. It slows Chrissy down a bit. Um, But then they also kind of like sprint off in sections, then start sniffing together and then uh, chase her around the neighborhood a bit more. With now this we're dog? In diff- yes, with this dog and this other owner. Because this woman's like, I was like, we had made it like five houses down and we still hadn't caught her. And I was like, you can go back home and this will be my battle. Like, you don't need to fight this battle with me if you don't want to. And she's like, oh, no, I need the exercise anyway and I'll help you out. So we finally cornered Chrissy. <laughs> like your parents, your parents' neighborhood is like teardrop shaped and your parents parents live at the bottom of the teardrop Mm -hmm. Chrissy was almost at the top of the teardrop by the time we finally caught her because she stopped to sniff something the woman was able to grab her collar and then I came right behind her and grabbed collar and scruff and twisted said scruff (laughs) and was like hey you're not going anywhere not enough to hurt Chrissy 
but enough to let Chrissy know that I was there and she wasn't going to go anywhere. And of course, I have no idea where I am. <laughs> I know your parents' street name and that's it in this neighborhood. I don't even know that. I have driven through <laughs> this neighborhood, so I know most of where the streets are. But I have no idea what any of the street names are. At least it's not your parents' old neighborhood where everything was Orchard something. So it's like, I'm on Orchard Road. And you're like, Orchard Lane? No, Road. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't, To be frank, I didn't, I've lived there for 23 years and, well, probably 20 years. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I didn't know the names of the streets. They're Orchard something. So I'm like, hey, we're at the street that's by the pool. And like, this is how you get to it from your house. I don't know where I am. And she's like, oh, we're off of this one street. And I was like, okay, sweet. We're off of this one street. And then she's like, do you want me to hang out? And I was like, you can go back home. Like, I got this car is coming. Um, I debated picking up Chrissy and just starting to walk to your parents' house. But I needed to catch my breath because <laughs> I had a big stitch in my side and I was very out of breath at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, was it hot out? It Fortunately, it wasn't super hot out. Like we had a few days that were scorching hot and those were the days that I was outside working. Today was actually pretty good. I should have been outside working today because um, it would have been a little bit more bearable. So I finally pull up Google Maps on my phone and say, OK, this is where I am. So you can come find me because here's the street name. That is not the street name that I told you before. No idea where I am. And so your dad shows up and he starts to get out of the truck. And I'm like, don't bother. So then he still continues to get out of the truck and grabs and has her harness and leash in his hand. And he's like, he's like, hey, I have her harness and leash. And I'm like, literally don't bother because I have already scooped up Chrissy (laughs) and I'm three quarters of the way through opening up his back door to shove her in the back of the truck. And I'm just like, get in-ish. Slam door. (laughs) There's just a bunch of tools back there. I'm not putting down any of the seats. You can stand. (laughs) Suffer for five minutes. You will live. (laughs) And so then we're, I'm like, also having to like text your mom and call your mom during all of this to be like, hey, no, this is what we've done. Like, we're good. We have Chrissy now. And I also text her like, okay, when we are almost at your parents' house, hey, just let the kids outside. I'll get them in the van and then we'll get Chrissy in the house. But she didn't see the message. So we get back to your parents' house and your dad's again like, here's her harness and her leash. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to bother trying to put these on her when we are outside of your house because then she's just going to get away again. And now she won't make it as far because she's tired now. (laughs) But I also am tired now. So I will not make it as far. Oh, wait, but before that. I remembered that I had parked my van across the driveway. So I go, I get out, I move the van and then I go to get Chrissy and I just pick her up and I just throw her in the house. And I am like, here you go, dog. Stay. (laughs) (sighs) And this is why we call her affectionately shithead. Yeah. (laughs) Because then after that, I still had to go to the grocery store with two crazy kids because Lily was no nap Lily. I guess she didn't spend enough time outside today. Um, Or she was just excited to be at Oma's house. My sister uh, is working 40 hours a week this summer. Yeah. So she couldn't. I guess I guess they didn't go outside. Did did Elliot nap? Elliot napped. So Lily told me that... uh, one of her friends came over. She told me that too. I don't know if that's true. Yeah. So we get to Kroger and what I've been doing lately and has been working out pretty well is I let Lily out of her car seat, close her car door and tell her that she's getting out on Elliot's side. And then she's at least in the car and contained when I walk around the car to get Elliot out. Um, so I'm getting Elliot out of his car seat and Lily says, I stay in van mom. I'm like, no, you're not old enough to stay in the in the van while mom was in the store without an adult. <coughs> well, you stay in van with me, mom. That's not going to work because I need to go grocery shopping. Like, no, you have to come with mama. Non-negotiable. And so I've got each kid on hand and we close up the van and I turn around 
And I'm like, score. Never have we ever used one of the car carts. And I was like, there's a car cart right here. Guess what, kids? Merry Christmas. You guys get to drive a car at the grocery store today. <laughs> and I shove both kids in that cart. Because between No Nap Lily and Elliot being Mr. Independent, this car cart is the only thing that's going to get me through this grocery trip. And it worked. So it worked. Yeah. So, I mean, they stood up a few times, but they would sit back down again. Yeah. And they didn't try to get out of it. Like, they'll try to get out of the cart sometimes. So, managed to do our... So, managed to do what was supposed to be our quick grocery trip, but turned into a longer trip because my legs didn't really want to work anymore. But we made it. And then we got home and the kids helped me unload the groceries. And it was nerve-wracking and slightly adorable. Because Lily kept asking to help, so I handed her toilet paper and then paper towels and then milk. Well, halfway through walking through the garage, Lily's tall, but fortunately she's not super mega tall. She dropped the milk. And I was like, oh, shoot. But it was fine. (laughs) It didn't open. I was like, ah, I'm going to have to clean all this up. This is a terrible idea. Um, And then I hand Elliot my little, like, half gallon or one and a half liter bottle, whatever it is, of bleach. Because he can't get into it. It's fresh from the store. It's fine. So I hand it to him. And he had seen his sister with milk. So, I mean, it was slightly heavy for him. But he was doing okay. And didn't seem like he was struggling too much. Until he got to the same point in the garage where Lily dropped the milk. And then he went, ah. And dropped the bleach on the floor. (laughs) And then struggled to pick it up. Because it's hard to pick something up that heavy when you're that little. So he, he completely mimicked her. He com- That's what he does now. He completely mimics her. She does something and then he's got to do the something. And occasionally he does something and then she does it. And I'd be like, whoa, 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 Lily, you know better. He's still learning. Help us teach him the right way to do things. <laughs> so then he tried. He was struggling to pick it up. And at this point. I like grabbed all of the other groceries from the car and closed the van door and locked it. So it's like, I don't have anywhere that I can really put this stuff. I'm like Elliot, you got this, you can pick it up. And so he manages to pick it up, but he's still struggling. Cause now it's lower than it was before. And like Lily help your brother. And she's like, I take something that you're holding. No, no, no. Grab what your brother's got and then walk in the house. <laughs> and I just herded the crazy cats into the house. They are crazy. Yeah. That was, today was a day. And then our internet stopped working. So I had to figure out how to fix that with the tech people. So you can actually work from home tomorrow. And what did they tell you? Did you turn it on and on and back off again? Like, yes, I have turned all of the equipment that I am able to turn on and off again, on and off again. And then I learned there was another piece of equipment that I could turn on and off again. But I had to open up a box outside the house. But now I know how to do that. Mm. I think it was working before I did that. Mm -hmm. But I do think that the reset helped. Because I don't know when the last time was that equipment was cycle powered anyway. Other than when the power went out. Mm. And even then it might not have. Because the phone lines don't always go down when the power goes out. Yeah. Mm. I'm curious to see where that box is though. I can show you. Yeah. It's easy peasy lemon squeezy. Oh, and I also got up on a ladder today. Oh. Yeah. So I could measure the big giant window we have in the front of our house. And yes, I know that big and giant mean basically the same thing, but it is a very big giant window. Is it in close proximity? It's, yeah, it's (laughs) about, it's about a U tall and a U wide. Oh. So it is a very, very big window. And I have to figure out how we're going to handle that window for the summer. Because it gets very warm when the sun oh, shines sorry. through that window. Well, what kind of summer? Hot mom summer. Hot mom summer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so as part of my hot mom summer, I helped assemble a gazebo at your parents' house by reading lots of instructions and finding piece F6 that is different than piece <laughs> F5. Yes. Do not interchange those two pieces. Um, And we talked about that. Yeah, with your father. But we finished it. You finished it, yeah. Yeah. It took multiple days. It was 
three days of me helping. I think it was four or five days overall between your dad and your brother and me. Um, cause we got half the roof put on one. So, cause they, we got the base and the uppers for the roof put on, on the first day. That was on Friday, which would have been what we talked about in the podcast. And then over Memorial day weekend, your dad and brother got the tippy top roof mm-hmm. and some more of the support beams put on some of which they put on backwards, which was annoying. Um, they didn't know they put them on backwards though, until we started to assemble the roof on Tuesday. Um, and so we have to, you have to do one side at a time and it's definitely at least a two person job to put these panels up. (laughs) And there are some places that only I can assemble things because only I can fit in the space that you have available to assemble the things. But it's easier for your dad to assemble because he has a longer reach. (laughs) So teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. Which is now a quote that Lily says. Oh my God. It is so adorable. (laughs) I'm so proud of me for that one. Um, I don't remember what we were doing. We were doing something together. And I wasn't even the one who said it first. She was the one who said it. She said, teamwork makes the dream work. And then we high-fived. And I was like, yes. <laughs> so we get half the roof put up one day before we're like, it's too hot. We going to die. We're done for the day. And then on Wednesday, we finished it off. And about halfway through us working, your brother comes to help. Which at that point isn't super helpful. Because your dad and myself have a system down that we now have to teach him so that we can alternate breaks. But then we get to the last side. And what had been our saving grace was that when we get to the last side, well, we've got an extra bit of the deck that we can stand on and we can stand in the unassembled roof portion to help get the last two panels of that side on. Technically last, yeah, last two panels. Well, we don't have that option because now we're we're working on the fourth side. So that empty side is now filled. So it's Caroline, get up on the ladder, put on this panel, tighten it down, and then hope that you can squeeze out of the space that you have left. Putting on the the second to last panel was fine. The space was big enough. It was a little weird, but I managed to squeeze out of the space that I had available to put on the sec- the third to last panel. The second to last panel was very sketchy. Because there was not a lot of space left for me once I got the panel on. And I had a phone call in like 45 minutes. So I was like, okay, we need to get this done because I'm the only one that can fit in the space. So we get the panel on. And I'm like, okay, somebody hold the ladder, to which no one holds the ladder. And I'm like, okay, I got to get out of this space. And then I'm afraid that I can't get out of the space. And all Uh that's going through my mind is, if I'm going to have to take this call and be like, hey, can you hold up for a second? They're about to power up the jaws of life. (laughs) Let them cut through this and then we can talk. But I mean, I, I knew that worst case scenario, I could undo the panel that I had on so I could get myself back out. And then we just have to find a very creative way, probably with an extension ladder, which would have been a few hours to go get and come back with it to go up and over to go up and over from the outside versus trying to assemble it from the inside. But I managed to squeeze it. I think there was a quote at one point. It was Carrie sucking your boobs. (laughs) Which just made me laugh, which was the opposite of helpful. (laughs) I'm like, guys, I can't laugh until I'm out of this because otherwise (laughs) I'm going to be stuck. (laughs) So I made it out. Yeah. Your mom said she was watching through the window because she had super high anxiety the whole time we were assembling this. And we're just like, go inside. We're fine. We've done sketchier stuff at work. It's okay. 
<laughs> and she's like, I had my phone out ready to dial 911 because <laughs> I did not like the way any of that looked. <laughs> and I was like, ah, we were fine. Oh, it's been it's been a week now <laughs> and my bruise is no longer. Bru- my rib is no longer bruised. Like it doesn't hurt when I push on my side. Oh, that's good. Or breathe too heavy, <laughs> which is good because I did a lot of heavy breathing today as I was running through your parents' neighborhood. Yes. Uh, but uh, so you built a gazebo. Yep. And then we're like doing this all the way out of order. But that's, that's, okay. that's fine. It's me. Um, We had our birthday celebration because my birthday is the day after Joe's brother's birthday on Sunday under the gazebo. And I told everybody, you better enjoy this gazebo and ooh and all over it because we are spending every second of our summer possible of our hot mom summer under this gazebo because it was a bear to put together. <laughs> mm-hmm. And talking to Marco about it, he said that he has a friend who, he has two friends that bought gazebos that were similar assembly to what we got, or which parents got. Um, One of which was very handy and assembled everything themselves, and it was fine. The other one was not very handy and spent the same amount of money in a contractor to assemble the gazebo as they did on the gazebo itself. Oh, boy. (laughs) Yeah. So I was like, hey, in-laws, I just saved you a lot of money. (laughs) Thank you for paying me in food and coffee. Yes. And beer. And donuts. Yeah, that was part of the coffee. It was part of the coffee. Uh, So we celebrated um, your birthday and my Mm -hmm. brother's birthday. And uh, they had kebabs. Yep. Chicken kebabs with... Chicken kebabs and veggie. So they they did it the right way where it was all chicken on one kebab and all peppers on one kebab. So that way you know that everything is going to cook for the proper amount of time. Yeah. Like my mom, we, my mom loves kebabs. Um, and for a while she, she, she used to, you know, prepare a kebab for like a person. Like yeah. you would get a kebab and it would and be, it'd be like a tomato, a pepper, an onion, some chicken, a tomato, yeah. chicken, pepper, onion. Tomato. And then uh, she met her family and, and no one would eat the tomatoes. Or the, or the tomatoes or, would be completely exploded and annihilated while the chicken was still <laughs> everything mostly would be, cooked. Everything would be cooked. I don't ever remember eating anything like raw, mm-hmm. but um, it was just like the picky eaters. Like y'all are super picky. Like no one would eat the stuff. So it mm-hmm. was, we were like passing around the kebabs anyway. Yeah. So she's like, screw it. I'm just going to put the chicken in one kebab. Onions on one kebab, peppers, you know, etc. Put kebab pieces in bowl. You pick out what you would like to eat. Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. So she she's learned over the years. Um, but funny story, they have a super annoying neighbor. So annoying. <clears throat> Screw you, hot tub guy. A backdoor neighbor. Um. And like you said, uh, the neighborhoods. Um, it's mostly young families with fences and dogs. It's a mixed neighborhood. Mixed meaning um, the houses are mixed. So there are ranches. There are two stories. You know, there's there's all kinds of houses in this neighborhood. And it's a big neighborhood. And there are a ton of kids. Like I remember going, like getting off work or whatever early ish like mm-hmm. i would be driving down at like four fifth four or three or whatever um i don't remember why i was off that early but whatever um but i was driving through the neighborhood and there would just be a bunch of kids in the circle like probably a dozen maybe more mm-hmm. kids playing in the street in the circle oh yeah so one time i went to drop the kids off or pick them up And I was behind a school bus and the school bus went one way in the neighborhood. And because your parents' neighborhood has a teardrop shape, you can go either direction. Just one direction is shorter than the other. And they went in the shorter direction. And I was like, you know what? 
I'm going to take the long way around. And I made it to your parents' house. And I think either, and I think I got the kids unloaded before the bus made it to your parents' house because there are so many kids that it's picking up in the neighborhood. So it takes many, forever. So many kids. And like Lily's only there two, three days a week at the most. And she, she already she, has a group of six girls that she runs around with. She has a pack of girls. Yeah. Her age. Yeah. They're all a little bit older than her, but she's the same size as them. So it's fine. Oh, that's fine. Um, I thought there was one that was her age at least. Like I think four. there's like a, a kid that's her, like a boy that's her age. I don't know. Like one of them has a little brother that's her age. I don't remember them talking about a boy. I do. But it's the the times I've seen it's just been a pack of girls and they've all been a little bit older than Lily. Um, and there is the neighbor that we talked about in our previous episode that is just not a nice guy. And it's like the did old man yells at cloud. I'm pretty sure we did. And how there's this mean guy. I don't know. He's he's a backdoor neighbor and he spends his time going on his deck. And, uh, and screaming at kids who go he's through got, his yard. Like, the kids on both sides of his house play with each other. So they're going to cut through his yard to get to the other person's house. It's not like his yard is like super pristine. No, and his yard looks worse than your parents' yard. And your parents' yard is struggling to keep up with the fact that two dogs live in it. Yeah, And he uh, has zero dogs that live in his yard. And a uh, shithead digs. Yeah. She does. <laughs> um, so we're sitting. We got to your parents' house early because the kids fell asleep in the car. So we're like, we're just going to drive around and then just show up at your parents' house instead of hanging out at the house. Instead of hanging out at our house and then hoping the kids sleep in the car closer to party time. Um, so we go sit out in the back deck because we're like, we are going to enjoy this. Dang it. We are going to have a hot mom summer under the, this gazebo, whether you like it or not. It was actually pleasant out it was really nice out and the gazebo super helped because it wasn't deathly sun um and so we'd maybe been outside for like five minutes 10 minutes at the most and he comes outside in a shirt that looks like a monkey's face where the monkey's mouth is his belly button it is not a flattering shirt i try very hard to not laugh very out loud at it he has a mullet too he does have a mullet this is the first time i saw him like I've heard about him. Yeah. Like he screams at kids, including, I believe, our daughter. I believe he has yelled at our daughter before, yes. In front of my mom. Mm -hmm. Not when I was there, because if I was there, uh, <laughs> words would have been said. That would have been not nice. Um. So he starts blasting his music. And it's like 80s. 70s or 80s like hair metal but nothing but, that we've heard before so it's not like we can sing along to it it was like super loud and it was way more loud it was way louder than necessary um and what was funny was at one point his wife comes outside and she's like is it loud enough for you like her way of saying hey you should probably turn this down a bit so he pauses the music for a bit Joe starts clapping and we're like, Joe, you're just going to egg him on. <laughs> um, and she's like, no, I'm, la I'm clapping at my daughter and a thing that she did. It's just coincidence that they happened at the same time. It's fine. <laughs> um, she goes back inside and then the music starts back up again. And then I'm like, hey, should I start yelling Girl Scout songs? And everybody told me no. So I did not start singing Girl Scout I songs. I don't think he would have heard you. I can be pretty gosh dang loud. <laughs> I can wake up a camp of 60 girls in less than 30 seconds. What was my favorite was... Well, they're all concentrated. Not when they're in tents. When the tents are spread out. My favorite was the summer where I had a bunch of PAs that didn't really know a lot and weren't super confident. So, like, my big goal was to get them super confident by the end of the week. Um, this is... This was the day camp that I helped run. These are the leaders. These are the teenage... Yeah, the teenage, teenage leaders. Leaders. PAs. Um, and so I'm like, okay, I'm going to teach you guys the good morning song, which is literally just G O O D M O R N I N G. Good morning. Hey, Hey, good morning. But you yell it at the top of your lungs. And one of the leaders said that I was louder than the 12 girls that were repeating after me. Wow. <laughs> How old were you at that point? Uh, 
24 ish. Yeah. So you've been in Girl Scouts before. Yeah. Well, my favorite, I have a lot of favorites. Uh, when I was working at the library, we used to announce when we had like 15 minutes and 10 minutes and five minutes before the library was closing. Um, except we had to stop doing that because one night I announced it and a patron turned around and said, wait, that noise that, that, that came out of you and it's little five foot, four and a half Caroline. Um, and I was like, yeah. And another patron complained because I was too loud. So I wasn't allowed to announce that the library was closing anymore. (laughs) Well, it's a library. You have to be quiet. We were never quiet. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Though a librarian did teach me how to knit, she was not a quiet person. Wow. In a library, she was. She could be, yes. Uh, But so he he was hanging outside a lot of the time. We were hanging out outside. Yeah. We would have brought all of our Bluetooth speakers and started blasting stuff. But fortunately, since then, he has gotten a fence put up in his yard. So he can keep those gosh dang kids off his gosh darn yard because old man yells at cloud. Yeah. Why do you move into a neighborhood with a bunch of kids? I don't know. Because like if he wanted, like he could have a hot tub in the deck that he has in my mom's neighborhood. Which has no fences and like five children. Because there are some kids in mom's neighborhood, but there aren't a ton. Because you're not allowed to have play sets or trampolines or anything like that. You can only have like a small plastic. It's the old, the old person neighborhood. <laughs> yes, as I lovingly referred to it on Thursday and then got death glares from your aunt and uncle. And I was like, hey. I'm not the one who said that first. That was your lovely in-laws stares at Joe's parents. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. It was a lovely punt. It was such a good punt. <laughs> and she's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We never said that. I'm like, mm, girl, no, you did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also uh, ordered a bunch of mulch. Four scoops. I yeah. would estimate that I have put down one and a half scoops so far. No, oh, that's it? I don't know. I mean, the pile's still pretty big. I'm pretty sore. I think I'll make a lot, I'll make a lot better progress um, the next day I work on it because there's less weeding to do now. Um, the first few flower beds that we did had a ton of weeds. It was bad. It was so bad. And it was not totally our fault. Because we we ordered this. The, the goal was to do it by Mother's Day. No, the goal was to do it before Memorial Day weekend. But we, we called on before Mother's Day. No, we didn't. Was it the weekend after Mother's Day? It was way after Mother's Day. We called them before Memorial Day. And their dye wasn't working. And I could have gone with a different mulch company. But I was like... I'm building a gazebo now, so I don't have time to mulch anyway. So we'll just wait until they can deliver it. Mm. And so they were able to deliver it on Wednesday, but I said no, deliver it on Thursday or something like that because, or no, they were able to deliver it on, yeah, it was like Wednesday or Thursday, and I said no, deliver it on Friday because we were both off on Friday. Yes. And that's when we made the bulk of the progress with the mulch. And then I slowly, I worked on it two different days on my own. Or one day, just, was it just one day? That, no, it was two days. Because one day was... You worked on it this week with yeah. one day, I think. I worked on it two days this week and we're almost halfway around the house. We have yeah. a lot of flower beds. Yeah, our house um, has a side side yard beds. Front yard beds and backyard beds. Yeah. I mean, and it's it's all like stone landscaping <clears throat> around the whole house. It's like our old house had lots of flower beds, but it was mostly just like. Grass. Straight to grass. Yeah. So we could just take get, everything get out and then let the grass grow into it. And it was fine. I cannot do that here. I can potentially let the ivy take over. 
I don't really But like, I don't like the IV. I, I kind of want the IV to go away. I, I want the IV to go away. What's up with him? He's fine. I was just checking on him to make sure he was still in bed. Okay. So Look at how cute he is. Oh, man. He's actually laying on his pillow. No, he's not. He's just, he's way off the Like pillow. the side of his pillow? Oh, yeah. He, like he, lately he, he's been. He's not upside down or sideways yeah. on his bed. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we got mulch. I've been working on that. Joe helped out one day. Um, it's good exercise. My doctor says I need to get more exercise. So, and that mulching is good exercise because I told her that I had been mulching and I was sore. <laughs> she said that was good. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, woohoo! Is uh, wiring our fire alarms exercise? Uh, it is, but I might have to buy a taller ladder than the one that I have. Our ladder is not super tall. Why is that? Because some of the ones in the kitchen are very, very high up. And our ladder was, was made for our other house, which had like seven and a half foot ceilings. And this house has like 10 foot ceilings. So I need to buy a bigger ladder. This is not just me wanting to go to the hardware store and buy stuff. 90% of the fire alarms you could reach with that letter. What about the 10% I can't? <laughs> it's also really hard to get to that stinking mantle place that's by our giant window. Which how, eventually I'm going to clean and put my trees up there. How did you get up there then? With the little giant ladder and a full extension. I might be able to get to it easier with my extension ladder, but then I have to dig my extension ladder out, and I just do not feel like doing that. Because I got to move a bunch of stuff so I can get it out of the Don't garage. Don't you have to lean that against something? I got to lean the little giant against something, too, when it's in full extension. You weren't home. It was fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Clara was there for protection. Uh, but I was home on Tuesday. What was that? Tuesday? When yeah. chaos happened. I was upstairs working. I went into the office on Monday. I was home on Tuesday, though. Mm-hmm. So I was upstairs working, minding my own business. And then all hell broke loose because uh, <laughs> someone who, um, <clears throat> Lily. Uh, might have some of her mother's genes. She, she might have some of your genes. And uh, completely wiped out while she was on a walk with your mom. Mom says it was a run. I Lily also said that she was running. And it was bad. Yeah. I had my back turned because I was mulching with Elliot. Getting bit by black ants because little black ants can bite you and it's very annoying. I disturbed their home and they were not happy with me. Yeah, that was fun. Oh, you didn't tell me that. No. Um, <laughs> but so... Lily and mom are going to go for a walk. Elliot doesn't want to go for a walk, so he's going to stay here and help mulch with mom, which means scoop mulch out of my flower bed into the wheelbarrow. (laughs) Thanks, bud. We're trying to get the concept down of where the mulch is supposed to go. My favorite, though, is when he would put a scoop of mulch in his little plastic wheelbarrow and then pick up his wheelbarrow to dump his whole wheelbarrow in mine. (laughs) I'm like, you can just scoop directly into... What else, dude? You're having fun. <laughs> you're getting worn out. I'm probably building up your stamina, but at least you're going to nap real good today. And that's all he that matters. He wears uh, tank tops a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's a, he's enjoying Hot Mom Summer. He's not a mom. He really is. But um, I mean, Hot Mom Summer involves being outside a lot, which he loves. Yes. So we're busy mulching and all of a sudden we hear screaming. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what's going on? But like, I'm covered in mulch. There's only so much I can do to help. So I'm like, okay, Lily, let's sit in your chair. Grandma's going to get some wipes and some band-aids and we'll see what we can do. Um, I don't know how she did this, but both knees. Well, so both knees make sense. What I don't get is it's... The arm? The, the, yeah. Like the, the inner it's like arm? If you bend your elbow, it's like the part of your elbow that looks like a butt. That's what she scratched, not her, not the pointy bit of your elbow because I'd expect her to scratch the pointy bit of her elbow but no I think she like slid like this um which is great for a visual medium that is this podcast yes um we could do video 
eventually we will get there when I am more awake. Um, so mom gets band-aids and then we talk about how she's like, well, what can I put on it? Cause we're not allowed to use hydrogen peroxide anymore. According to who? Doctors. Which doctor? All of them. Hydrogen peroxide kills bad tissue, but it also kills good tissue. So it doesn't help with healing. It actually prevents healing. You don't put it on every single day. No, but you also don't like need, need that. Um, unless you have like, I fell into like a giant muddy poopy pit. Then yes, you probably need hydrogen peroxide to kill everything. She did not fall into a giant muddy poopy pit. Um, so we get some baby wipes so we can wipe that up. Mom goes inside and finds band-aids. She ends up with four band-aids, two on her arm, a giant one on her knee, and then a small princess band-aid on her other knee. Um, and is very much okay. All work is halted for the day. Let's all go inside and watch some TV. <laughs> so yeah. we can just like sit still in one spot and rest. She wasn't happy the rest of the day. She was not. And then I was um, very determined to give them a bath. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to the point where I think y'all were upstairs and I was still finishing dinner. Elliot was still finishing dinner. Well, I was just... So how did Lily come upstairs <laughs> She was mostly done eating dinner, so she wandered upstairs. Okay. Elliot well, was st- Elliot was only halfway through his dinner. And she was there, and I was there, and I was going to give her a bath. And then I was going to take off the Band-Aids, you know, to soak, to soak her, her wound. I don't know if that's the right word, or scrape. Wound. It's definitely a wound. The one on her knee is. That's real bad. The one on her other knee. Just the one knee, really. Yeah, the one knee is really bad. The arm is meh. Her other knee is fine. Yeah. Like, it, it's already healed, basically. Yeah, and she won't let you get anywhere close to her Band-Aid. And she's screaming. So I come upstairs, so I'm like, why is Lily screaming? Like, we'll leave the Band-Aids on for bath time. Because it'll help keep everything nice and happy with Band-Aid on it during, nap time, during bath time. And then she was upset. And then Elliot, who likes to copy her... He just became an inconsolable mess because he didn't, he is not doing great with transitions lately. <laughs> um, so changing outfits, going from one activity to another is definitely not going great at the moment. So he was very not happy about having to put his Thomas shirt in the wash so he could take a bath. To the he, point he, of, he was very attached to that Thomas shirt. <laughs> yeah. To the point of he got out of the bath was screaming his head off when I was trying to put his pajamas on him. I was like, okay, here, you have a diaper. Go run around. Figure out your life. He dug through the laundry basket to get out the shorts and the shirt that he had been wearing and was like, no, I wear D's. (laughs) And I was like, you know what? Let me wipe down Thomas because you fed Thomas some yogurt. Get him as clean as I can. And you know what? You can wear these clothes to bed. You didn't wear them all day. Because you fought to get out of your pajamas this morning. So it's fine. Because he didn't actually put on his Thomas shirt until after nap time. Because he wanted to come outside and help me mulch. But transitions are hard. He did not want to get out of his jammies. (laughs) So he wasn't allowed to come outside and help until he was no longer in his jammies. Well, we got him in... Mom got him in shorts. But still his pajama top. So he came outside and joined me. I was like, okay, this is fine. At least we're in different shorts. Um, And then before nap time, he let mom take off his pajama shirt, but he wouldn't let her put on his Thomas shirt. So he naps in not a shirt. (laughs) That's fine. He finally lets me put his Thomas shirt on after nap time and then refuses to take the thing off. So like this morning, I had to be like, here is another Thomas shirt that we can put on this Thomas needs a bath <laughs> and it's just getting him distracted enough where I could pull the Thomas shirt off of him, but excuse me, let him freak out for like 20 seconds, distract him with another activity, shove other Thomas shirt on him, distract him with another activity. Oh, Hey, look, we're dressed and we're fine. <laughs> he, um, has opinions. 
but he doesn't know what those opinions are. <laughs> or how to thoroughly communicate them when he does know what they are. Yeah. Because this morning it was, here are four pairs of shorts. Oh God, that's too many. I because only... he said no to the first two. And then he ended up wearing shorts number three. Um, I was like, here are four shorts and four shirts. Pick some. So by the time I had, so Elliot woke up first, but by the time I had Lily dressed and ready to go, Elliot had picked out a pair of shorts and a shirt. And we had slowly, it was like over the course of 20 minutes, he finally got, oop, he finally got dressed. Two year olds. <laughs> yeah. Li- Lily did not really go through the terrible twos, but Elliot is making up for it in space. <laughs> Though I did see, um, there was a TikTok and it's popped up on my reels a few times, but it is, um, which one of your child children is most likely to do a hostile takeover of a government regime? And why is it your second child? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I I think it's like a 30, 70 between Lily and Elliot right now. It's definitely not like a, I mean, that puts him as more of the front runner, but like she, she has her moments where now everything with her is bargaining. So I'm trying to leave your parents' house with the kids before Chrissy got out. And Lily has a pretend baby bottle. One of the magic ones where the milk disappears when you feed it to your baby. And she's playing with it. And I said, okay, that's got to stay here because that's an Oma's house toy. It's like, well, but what if we take it home and I play with it at our house and then bring it back to Oma's house <laughs> on Friday? And I was like, no, girl, that's a special Oma's house toy that stays at Oma's house. Because we have one of those here. We have like three of those here. You just don't know where they are because you shove them in random places. And so then she's trying to bargain for more. So bargain for how can I take this toy home? Maybe if I say that we're going to bring it back, I can take it home. And when that doesn't work, how can I spend more time at Oma's house? So I'm not entirely sure if her letting Chrissy out was an accident or not. I'm pretty sure it was. But she did make a comment in the car on the way to the van, on the way to the grocery store, that she had more time at Oma's house. (laughs) Because Mama disappeared for a bit. (laughs) Yeah, because you left the dog out (laughs) that likes to run. (laughs) So it might be her. She might be the one that does the hostile takeover of a government regime. She's just really cute. And uh, she, <laughs> it's like the uh, the animals in the South Park, the Critter episode, the Christmas episode. Mm-hmm. They're super cute and cuddly, but they sacrifice children. Happy Tree Friends. Yeah. You still haven't watched Happy Tree Friends. No, I haven't. I've seen the South Park one. That's just basically Happy Tree Friends. Mm-hmm. I think that's what they were parodying. Probably. Yeah. My allergies are lovely right now mm. because part of Hot Mom Summer is spending like three hours a day outside, if not more. And there's a lot of trees in so our backyard. So many trees. Though if I, they don't cut them down. Yeah. Though I saw a crazy video where it was like blizzard conditions of tree pollen swirling through the air. Oh, my God. We just get light flurries. Where's this at? I think Colorado. I don't remember. But it was crazy. Like white floof, just like snow. Have you seen the videos of New York right now? Uh, Lots of smog. Yeah. Yeah. We actually are under, we were under a smog alert today. I don't know if we will be tomorrow or not. We were? Well, we were under an air quality alert. I think our air is fine. Our air is fine, especially compared to theirs. It's just like when it gets super hot, that's the only time it really pops up in Cincinnati. Well, it's not super hot. It's the wildfire. Oh, yeah. Have you not seen this? No. I, Dude, I've been building gazebos and mulching yards and running after two crazy kids. Lots of playing in the splash pad the last few days as well. So the kids have a kiddie pool that they have outgrown at your parents' house. Um, And then they have a splash pad here. Because I have not yet uncovered 
the pool in our garage. It's on my list. I'm getting closer because I sold two things from our stuffed garage today. Okay. Well, there, there's a uh, an ad. I can't believe I'm watching CNN. We toured CNN. It's a time lapse, allegedly. I haven't seen this version. It is darkness. Well, so it's... I don't know how much of it is the time lapse versus just... So, because it's, it's not a super big time lapse because it's 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. There's some big time jumps. Yeah, so 6 a.m. June 7th, you can see New York from where the photo is being taken. At 1 p.m., you can't. Just gets really orange. Yeah, the view from West Jersey at 2 p.m. Just people are saying it's orange. like Blade Runner 20. Uh, what is that movie? 2049 or whatever. Something like that. Um, or like that Doctor Who episode where they're stuck in traffic. With the nuns? Yes. With the first episode of The Face of Bow? Bo? One of the first episodes of The Face of Bow? Yeah, this is due to a Canadian wildfire. And people say it's really bad. Only you can prevent forest fires. I, I get they don't have that up there. Yeah. Don't play with matches. Make sure your fires are in proper fire circles. And can be contained. But the smog, it's its from Canada. Canadia. Say it Can- right. It's from Canadia. And it's the smog is going to New York and then it's traveling uh, south mm-hmm. along the East Coast. So it's going to be like in the D.C. area tomorrow. I don't think we'll be affected. I don't, I don't think we're far enough east. No. Um, but they said it smells like a campfire. I'm down for that. No. I mean, I'm not down for the reason why, <laughs> but. Like, some people said you can't see the hand in front of your face. Like, it's that bad. Yeah. I need to, just because of the pollen, I was reminded today at my doctor's visit that I have an additional medication that I can take this time of year to help me exist as more of a person. Because me running after Chrissy was like 530-ish. And I finally felt like I had fully caught my breath at like 6.30 or 7. Just between running after Chrissy and all of the gunk that's in the air right now. Corralling the kids. And and corralling the kids and stuff. Yeah. Because they were... No nap Lily is crazy. She's insane. (laughs) (laughs) She was like running around the table. Yeah, she had a bite of strawberry in a food pouch for for dinner. I was happy I got her to do that food pouch. At least that's something. Yeah. Something. So I ate her straw. Well, no, I, I ate most of her strawberries during Elliot watching Mickey Mouse Clubhouse before the internet went out. And Elliot noticed me eating her strawberries and wandered over <laughs> and was like, hey. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, Bob, here, have some more strawberry. Because. Our kids will do almost anything for strawberries, unless it's no nap lily. Then all bets are off. Yeah, she was just running around this, the, the kitchen table, and we're like, Lily, food. We are eating dinner. Like, what, what's going on? She didn't even ask for any crunchy bits from her salad. That's usually like her go-to is like, can I have some salad? Can I have some salad? She usually, I don't think she even knew. She wasn't there. Yeah. And then she wanted her list, like which was a <laughs> bunch of... Of papers on on her dresser, mm-hmm. and then I'm like, okay, here's your list. Let's whatever. And then she proceeded to rip them up. So I'm like, no nap, Lily cannot be trusted. So sometimes what you have to do with no nap, Lily, is just <laughs> pin her in bed. <laughs> I read to and her and wait for the screaming to stop, and then she falls asleep. Wow. And that's sometimes what you have to do with no nap, Elliot, too. Just if I keep you in the same three square feet for five minutes, he was bad he yesterday. Was pass out. Like trying to get him to sleep yesterday, it was it was a process. Yeah, and he started waking up at 
anywhere between two and three thirty in the morning. It was three thirty in the morning, like right on the nose, like two or three days in a row. That's weird. Then last night it was two a.m. Because when he came in a room, I was like, "Oh, it's three thirty. Oh no, it's only two. Sweet. Um, to have a friend come hang out in bed with him because he just wants to snuggle. We won't let him sleep in our bed. No, because then we won't be able to get him out. And but our bed is only a queen, <laughs> and we have two dogs that sleep in it. We in addition not, to us, we do not have room <laughs> for any more bodies in our bed <laughs> until we upgrade. No, no more room. <laughs> I mean, because Clara fills up the space given to her. Oh my God, so Clara is the worst. Whenever we sleep in a king size bed, instead of sleeping in the shape of a ball, Clara she sleeps in the shape of a starfish. <laughs> And then Zoe still sleeps in the shape of a ball, but like pushes my legs to the end of the bed. So I'm like, <laughs> why am I falling off the bed? And there's three feet between me and Joe. <laughs> Zoe, move your butt. They're so cute, though. Yeah, they do like they do like the the animals, the the dogs, mm-hmm. and the kids. Maybe I can convince Clara to sleep in Elliot's room at two o'clock in the morning if he wakes up again. I just don't trust her. She's too quite cuddly. Like, what if she smothers him? What if he smothers her? Or that. I'm not worried about her <laughs> or about him. He can take care of himself. I don't know that he can at this point. But uh, wh- what's in store for Hot Mom Summer? What else do you want to do? So we're going to go to the zoo. I think I've got, I've tentatively penciled in a zoo date on Tuesday. Um, we're going to visit some splash pads. Yeah. I'm going to set up a play date for Clipper Park. Um, Where's that? In Coleraine. So not too far away. We're hanging outside a lot. So much outside time. Just go outside and play. And an update on, um, the awning. What, what are we calling it? The, the thing on the deck awning, the, the, the cover thing. The roof. Yeah. It's not a pergola. I think it's just like a roof. Awning probably works. The covered part of our deck. Mm -hmm. We got rid of the bees. They have not returned. Yes. So the bees are, the bee situation is under control for now. However, almost immediately after that, a bird put her nest. Yep. So now we can't hang out outside because there's the bird that lives out there. And we think she laid eggs and stuff because she's like sitting in the nest and she's like moving her butt butt around. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we can destroy the nest. And I didn't think birds laid nests this late into the spring. I have no idea. But here we are. And you said that there is a, you think a male bird like protecting her, like staring at you when you walk out. Yeah. So when, well, when she was, almost done or had just finished building the nest she would fly into the nest and then a different bird would hang out on one of the posts and just like stare at us through the window like y'all are staying in there right (laughs) so if we go on our deck now apparently we'll we might get attacked yeah so we're playing with the splash pad in the yard instead of on the deck until she moves out so it's always something i guess all right that does it for this week's show thanks so much for listening make make sure to like follow and subscribe to us on social media we are on facebook instagram and youtube and also twitter you can follow us at craft parenting podcast on all those platforms you can also get a hold of us via email which is craft parenting podcast at gmail.com if you like what you hear please leave us a rating and review on apple podcasts or your podcatcher of choice make sure to share the show it's what helps our show grow and all this information is available on our website, which is www.craftparentingpodcast.com. That's where we post the show notes and show notes. And you can follow me personally at Craft Parenting Joe on Instagram. And I am at Caroline Creates Crafts on Instagram. And with that, I'm Joe. And I'm Caroline. See you next time on the Craft Parenting Podcast. Bye.